Yo, 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 what up, YouTube? This is Smooth Cat with Colossal Boxing Talk today. Presenting you guys with another Forgotten Fighters video. Today, my Forgotten Fighter, I got this choice from one of, uh, one of our fans on Colossal Boxing Talk. His name is Alex Braun. Shout out to him for giving me the idea to uh, profile Le Leonard Duran. Leonard Duran is a, he's a, he's from Romania. He also was born April 10th, 1970, nicknamed the Lion. Uh, his hometown is Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He's an Orthodox fighter, standing in at five foot four, 64 inch reach. He's a very well accomplished amateur. His final amateur record was 239 wins and 15 losses. Duran also competed in the uh, in the Olympics for Romania in 1992 and 1996. Uh, he won a bronze medal at, at both of the Olympics, and in 1995 he won the World Amateur Championship for the lightweight division. But in the Olympics, he defeated Edgar Ruiz from Mexico with a score of 24 to 4. He defeated Arlo Chavez from the Philippines, 15 to 1. He defeated Peter Richardson from Great Britain by points. And he lost to Mark Leduc from Canada, 6 to 13. Those are 92 games. He competed at light welterweight. So he decided to move down and go to lightweight to see if he would get better results. So when he went down to lightweight, he went down, um, like I say, in 95 is when he won the World Amateur Championship in 96. He competed against Julio Umbum Bamba from Gabon, who he TKO'd in the second round. He defeated Sergey Kopikin from Cricket Krajastin. He beat him 10 to 1. He defeated Koba Gogoladze from Georgia, 17 to 8. And he lost to Hossein Sultani from Algeria. Okay, in 1999, as a professional, he won the WBC Continental Americas. Super lightweight championship. He uh the majority of his career he was he's a lightweight. He um he had a professional record of 22 wins, one loss by knockout and one draw. So uh the the first big big fight of his career was against Emmanuel Augustus in San Francisco, California. In a fight where he won a unanimous decision over Emmanuel Augustus in a very exciting, exhilarating fight. He was he he um he got the edge. He, he was a more aggressive fighter, and he, he took it to Emmanuel Augustus. But Emmanuel Augustus, as always, he brought it, and it was definitely a, a very fun fight to see. After that, he then went on to fight Raul Horacio Bobby, who he challenged for the WBA Rural Lightweight Championship in Freeman Coliseum, San Antonio, Texas, where he won a split decision in a very close competitive fight where it was kind of, it was to the point where a lot of people felt uh, Raul uh, Bobby won. So he decided um, to give him a rematch. So when he gave him a rematch in May 31st, he made Bobby come over to Romania in a fight where he won a clear unanimous decision over him. And like a, another fun fight, but he proved just to be the better man. After that, he went on to challenge Paul Spadafora for the for his IBF World Lightweight Title and the International Boxing Council Lightweight Title. And also, he put his belt on the line. That bout ended in a split draw. But what happened is, I, uh, he had a, a, a fight that was supposed to be coming up uh, between 2002-2003. Uh, he got stripped of the title. Because from He was supposed to make a title defense against Miguel Callist. But he, he failed to make the weight, so he was stripped of the belt. So after failing to make the weight, he moved up in weight to 140 pounds where his debut fight was against Charles Tishinarski who he uh, TKO'd 
in uh in his hometown of Canada. So after that, he um he got a big mo- he got a big height profile fight against the best fighter on his resume, uh Arturo Thundergotti. May he rest in peace. But he had, he had a fight with Gotti. Like you say, it was a very it was a fun fight. Gotti was far too big for him. Gotti dominated him and ended up knocking him out. So his only loss was a knockout loss to Arturo Gotti. He wasn't the biggest puncher by any means, but Leonard Dorofati, he was definitely he was tough. He was strong. He he was he was a lion. His nickname like fits him perfectly because in the ring he was just he was ferocious. He uh he he was always coming. He had he had good fundamentals as well. He wasn't the best boxer, but he had very good fundamentals. So like I said, he was a very talented guy. He had a thirty three percent KO uh KO percentage, and like I said, he also he he was a little guy. He was competing with a lot of bigger guys and. It, it caught up to him in the Gotti fight. Uh, the Paul Spider Four fight was another fight where he, he had he had some issues, but that that was a good competitive fight. But the Gotti fight, Gotti blew him out of the water. He was just he was like too big, too strong, and I, I don't think he had he. I think he, I don't think he should have went up to 140 at that time. I think he should have you know trained a little harder for 135. But I mean that's just my opinion from what I saw. But he, he just he looked way too small at, at one at 140 to me. So, anyways, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to this Forgotten Fighters exclusive. And like I say, uh, if you have any ideas of uh, fighters who you guys want me to profile, I'm definitely interested in it. And shout out to Alex Braun one more time for giving me um, Leonard Duran as a Duran as a potential um, somebody to profile on my show, so I definitely appreciate that. But uh, hit that like button for me. You know, leave comments in the comment section below. I'll get back to you at my earliest convenience. Like I, like I just mentioned, you can give me fighters to profile, and, and I, I definitely will put them in consideration. Um, also, hit the subscribe button at Colossal Boxing Talk. Keep showing us this support. We definitely appreciate it. We definitely back on our grind, so... We here and we here to stay. Um, go over to Facebook, hit that like button on the Colossal Boxing Talk Facebook page. Go to Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us at Colossal CBT. I am Smooth Cat, and I'm out.